coming in the mission, he will Amen. come. No matter how bad it is, he will come. Yeah, yeah. But there's another side of the coin that the devil has to face off with. Not facing off with you. Not facing off with what you did for God. But facing off with the Holy Ghost that's on the inside of you. Amen. I wish somebody praise God because the Holy Ghost know how, to, know how to handle every spirit that's in the world. Thank you, Lord. Your spirit too. Amen. amen. The Holy Ghost is powerful. Can okay, you say amen? amen? And every believer should be filled with him. Amen. There should not be one believer in here without the Holy Spirit. Amen. With an evidence of speaking in unknown tongue. Amen. That's one way that we know as unbelievers that something that has went into our heart. Because we are speaking a language that we ain't never spoke before. Amen. And I said again that the language for the Holy Ghost is not for believers because they already got the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's for the unbeliever. Can you say amen? amen. So if you want to know that you experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit, God wants to fill you tonight. Amen. I believe that he's going to fill you through this service tonight like, like never before. Can you say amen? amen. Are you got a receiving spirit in here tonight? Amen. Yeah, if you got a receiving, a receiving spirit, you're going to have exactly what God wants you to have. Amen. amen. Now, I need you to go, amen, to, uh, to uh, Joshua chapter 1. Amen. Joshua chapter 1. If you need a title tonight, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, title this, The Step of a Good Man or a Good Woman are Ordered by the Lord. Amen. Translation means they're established by God. Thank you, Lord. How many of y'all want your footsteps established yeah. by the Lord? How many of you want God to order your yeah. footsteps? Yeah. Amen. Instead of going the wrong way, you always walk in the straight way. Yeah. Now, just walk in the straight way, but God order you to the blessed place. And God finna order some of your footsteps from this time forward to the end of this year. Thank you, Lord. Some of you finna walk in some of the glorious presence of others. You gonna walk before men that are great. You gonna walk in the midst of men that are great, and God gonna give you the significant wisdom that you need. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, He gonna Thank order you, your foot to a prosperous place. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh yeah. See, I got the I call them patent term. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. You know what I call them? I call them patent terms. Because when you didn't have a car, Amen. they pat you everywhere, and then they turn you where you need to go. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. But God's going to put some R in your footstep. The Bible got a lot of script that they say about your feet. Amen. Amen. And you do, do you not know your feet is one of the greatest source of evidence of your disease, of your healing? At the bottom of your feet, handling everything in your body. Amen. At the bottom of your feet. Amen. You don't write about it, bro. Yes, sir. Amen. And therefore, you must need to know how your feet need to operate. Amen. When, when, when the doctors can tell that you got diabetes, your feet are black. Yes. Mm -hmm. When the doctor tell you got uh, 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 high blood pressure, amen, your feet are swollen and they're black. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 But God's finna fix those feet. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. In Joshua chapter 1, verses 3, amen, the Bible said, uh, no man shall be, this is God talking to Joshua after Moses had left, had died, and Joshua was standing there with anointing on his life that God had transferred on his life before Moses left. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, you know that God told Moses that he wasn't going to go to the promised land because he decided to disobey God. Amen. What opportunity he missed in the midst of it. I don't want to see something that I can't go to. Amen. I don't want God to show me something that I can't go to. Because if he showed me something, he want me to be there. Yes, but my disobedience will cut me short. Amen. My disobedience, amen, in my era of living all the time will cut me short from coming into the place of prosperity. Amen. And Moses disagreed with God on because you know he hit that rock too many times. That rock represents Jesus Christ. Well, God really got upset with Moses at, that God told him one time, I want you to hit the rock 
and didn't get a drink. But the next time I need you to speak to the rock. Yes. Amen. Once Jesus has been already, amen, crucified, you don't need to crucify him no more. Amen. You just need to speak to him. Hallelujah. And he'll answer you. He'll give you water. He'll give you bread. He'll give you healing. Amen. He'll give you direction. He'll Amen. give you prosperity. Amen. He'll give you joy. I'm talking about all you need to do is speak to him. Amen. And the Moses, amen, you know, how many know that Moses at least tried to get God to change his mind? He know he was stuck in a place, amen, that God told him you ain't get to cross over because you didn't, you didn't holler me before the people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen, therefore you can't go. And he had the last in his life looked at God and said, Lord, maybe, just maybe, just maybe, just maybe, you might change your mind. But God said still no. I'm going to let you see it. Just come on up here and I'm going to take you on in. Amen. But after that, before he left, God always going to leave somebody in place to carry out the will. Because somebody falls short of who God is, don't mean that God going to leave you without a leader. Amen. He always going to raise somebody up to take you to the land they call milk and honey. Amen. And God had already set Joshua in order to do what Moses was fitting to quit doing. Mm -hmm. And when God told, uh, amen, Moses to go up to the mountain, he died. Joshua was stagnated because he was in... He was in sorrow. Amen. He was grieving. He had lost focus of what Moses had laid his hand on to do. Amen. Amen. He gave him a choice to do. But God steps in and encourages him and tells him now in that, that first chapter, the third verse, he said, no man. He gave him the choice. He said, now get up. Get these people across this. I mean, no, I got to get you across somewhere. Yes, sir. You ain't going to live and live religion just be. And because you see people living in prosperity don't mean they're living in the power. They live in body of work. Can you say amen? But you're not going to do that. You're going to have both of them work. You're going to have the power of God and you're going to have good works for Christ. Hallelujah. And God tells them, say, get up, take these people over. And he did, he tell them in the third verse, and no man shall be able to stand before you. Whoa. All the days of your life. Amen. My God, God telling me from this time forward, for the rest of your life, there will be no man stand before you. All the days of your life. Could you capture that in your heart? That all the days of your life, there's nothing going to be able to stand against what God is doing in your life. Or stand before you to try to stop you from doing what God called you to do. Say that's me, say that's me. Everybody can receive this, amen, because they got some breaks in their mind, but somebody got an open curtain that they let God light shine through. Say all of my life. All of my life. Ain't no man gonna be able to step before me. Oh, I release that anointing on you right now tonight. I release that anointing on you right now tonight. Woo! Hallelujah. God saying, no man going to be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. That's powerful. Can you say amen? Now, I need you to go. I need you to see that because God said, and where the soles of your feet stand, I'm going to give it to you. Huh? That first, go back up to that. At, at, for, there, for, every place up on the soles of your what? Feet. Your thread that have our what? Give it unto you. As our what? Say it unto Moses. You heard what he said? Everywhere the soles of your feet, these here. Amen. Every other sole of your feet thread, amen. He said, that I have given to you. Amen. He said, now when your feet thread, he said, on that I have given to you. It already have been given to you. Your feet just been already in the place that was been given. Amen. Amen. Woo, this is good news tonight. Amen. That God finna finally get these babies in all. We don't use them to run away from crime. We don't use them to speak in other people's houses. <laughs> we don't use them to kick people in the midst of it. But God finna straighten these babies out again and finna order them to the place where he done already came to you. See, you didn't find it. It been waiting on you. It been waiting on you to let God order your feet to you. It been set now waiting on you. The next time been set now waiting on you. And then God said, now if I get these feet right, I'll give you the faith that I already got in Christ in you. Spirit here tonight. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Go to 
Joshua chapter 3, verses 13 through 15. Hmm. Joshua leave there after the command of God that God said, now wherever you put your feet, I'm going to give it to you. I already gave it to you. Now he leave and command the people to get together. Let's cross over. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody, say, get ready to cross over. Get ready to cross over. Hallelujah. And it said in the 13th verse, when the soles of the feet of the priests mm -hmm. who bear the ark of the Lord of all the earth, She'll rest in Jordan, the waters of the Jordan coming down from above. She'll be cut off and they shall stand up in heat. Amen. Now, the next verse in the 15th verse said, And when those who bought the ark, now he talked about when soon the priests make up their mind and hit that water, it's going to start banging back. Amen. Soon they put their feet in. Now, they put their hands in it first, it wouldn't have helped. Amen, amen. Do you hear me? If they would have put their hands in it first, it would have happened. Because he had a command that soon as their feet of the priests hit the waters, amen, amen it's going to bang itself up. Amen. It's going to stand up in a heat. Somebody say raising the standard. Raising the standard. With my faith. With my faith. To activate the promises of God. To activate the promises of amen. God. Amen. Now the Bible said he gave instruction first. Then the 15th verse said, And when those who bought the ark had come to the Jordan, the feet of the priest burned the ark, was in the brink of the water, for the Jordan overflowed all its banks throughout the time of harvest. Yes. Amen. You see it? Yes. And soon they put their feet, read the next word, what it says. And the ark which came down from above, above yes. stood and, and rose in the heat very far away. And, <laughs> and the city that is beside Zeratan, so the waters that went down into the sea of Ariba, the, sea, the salt sea, failed and were cut off, and the people crossed over the opposite Jericho. Everything was cut off. Yeah. Soon as he put his foot in the water, yeah. everything was cut off. I told you last night, from there back to Adam, God cut off every curse that was in Israel life because they obeyed God with their feet. Come on, God's going to cut some mess off. Hallelujah. I, I, I just love to see God reach backwards sometimes because he can go backwards and cut off mess that I don't have to have in my inner first no more. He'll reach backwards and cut it out then reach forward and send me forward. Okay, God reach backwards and cut it off. There's some stuff trailing you that God did not honor or follow you. There's some enemies out of Egypt that should not be following you no more. Amen. But God is saying, you got to get in this river with me because I'm going to cut it off. You the in that you see yesterday, you won't see no more. The end that you see last year, you will not see no more. Father, you will not see no more. Sickness, you will not see no more. I'm going to see God put eyes back in hands and arms back on, legs back on, hands back on. I'm going to see God do the supernatural miracle that he's saying.
keep on going Amen. in the wrong the direction. Amen. My head trying to go this way, but my body keep on pulling me this way. Uh -huh. Amen. But I believe tonight that your body going to straighten up with your mind. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Okay, there's a virtue happening right now that God breaking in the invisible realm. That is coming down to dust that Satan has set up in your life all this time, Amen. telling you that you could that you got you can't do it or you gotta do it by yourself. But God said this time it's gonna be me doing it. And I'm just teaching you on how to get to the place of prosperity Amen. and victory in your life for the rest of your life. I just need your feet to move for me, and I'm gonna guide them feet to victory at all times. Matter of fact, I'm gonna use your feet like an army. Them folk poor, leopard boy that sat down in a hungry place, and been so hungry they started wanting to eat up each other. That one looked like a turkey to one, and the other looked like a hamburger. Y'all been so hungry that one only looked like steak. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I mean, bologna even looked like steak. And when you finally got the salad, it tasted like steak. Spam even looked good. Y'all been so hungry that stuff started looking good that was not the real stuff? <laughs> Them four boys were looking at each other and saying, Look at you, you look like a baked turkey set beside me. We leopard, but we are hungry. And y'all look good to me. Those said, You look good to me. Oh, you think you lie? You look good to me. You look like a hamburger with cheese on it and mustard and lettuce and <laughs> but the Bible said they had heard from the man of God that this time at midnight uh -huh. amen about this time tomorrow amen, amen which was going to be midnight yes. amen that God was going to bring food in the camp mm -hmm. yeah. at least they will listen to the man of God amen. while they were sitting outside called Israel this them they had enough sense to say well it's midnight we sitting here hungry Amen. And, I, and, I, and you know, and I know there's some food in the enemy camp. Everything you need in life is in the enemy camp. Uh -huh. yes. Amen. And if you're waiting on the enemy to bring it to you, you're going to be waiting a mighty, mighty, mighty long time. Yes, sir. Can you say amen? amen. But they made up their mind say, if we going to die, let us die in the hand of the enemy. They had put in their mind say, if they gonna get me, I'm gonna have a biscuit going in. I'm on my way to death anyway. Stuff eat me up anyhow. My flesh balling falling off of me. Amen. Get up and move a little. My flesh just falling off. He said, if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die with leprosy, but I'm gonna be full. Amen. And the Bible says, soon they got up and start putting their feet on the ground. Yeah. God made it sound like a great army. Yes, it is. To the enemy that they was going after. Amen. It sounded so great that the enemy started running out of their camp before the four boys showed up in the mix of it. I'm telling you something about your feet this time. It's going to attack your enemy before you get there. I told you that God said I have given you the place where your feet's going to thread up on and God will hurt it. And God has already prepared the place where their feet finally thread up on. And they tweet in. And they got to eat everything that was in the house. Joshua had prayed and commanded the moon 
and the sun not to go down. The moon not to come out and the sun not to go down. Mm -hmm. And God answered a man and obeyed his prayer. And we lost days wow. right there. Amen. Are you in the house? Amen. That's why you have 28 days and sometimes 31. Because mm -hmm. God took a day mm -hmm. just for his man to win the battle. Bless you, Lord. Lord. It's amazing how God helped up some of your bills. Come on. Yes. Yeah. 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 Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Help them up. Help the bill collector from doing what he wants to do. Yes. Cut your lights off, Monday yes. and they'll just make it there. They still try to make it tell. It's amazing. I believe God sent them the wrong way around <laughs> until he got through giving you what you need to take care of your situation. Yes, sir. Are you in the house with me? Yes, God love you so much that he hear your prayer. Yes. Until you come to a place to where you love him so much that you're asking for something. Yes, You'll keep on thinking he don't love you because of the thing you don't have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got everything in him. Amen. Everything you need to get is in him. Amen. Everything you need to see happen is in him. Yeah. Can you say amen? Yeah. In him I move. And in him I live. And in yeah. him I have my being. Yeah. Can you say amen? In him is where I'm at. Yeah. I'm here in him. Yeah. So here here's Joshua after this. Amen. They done fought the battle because God done helped up the day from going down. Gave them enough time. Gave enough light to whoop the enemy. And some team left running. I mean, how I many know it ain't nothing like a hidden devil? Amen. It ain't nothing like a devil that can go hide. Amen. It ain't nothing like a snake hiding in the fire that he should have been burnt in. Amen. <laughs> like that snake that was hidden in the fire that when Paul came out of the river being cold, they had a little fire and he put some more bundles on it. Yes, sir. And all of a sudden the snake jumped out because it was too much fire. Yes, yes. Oh, he said in that little bit of flicking flame you got. You, you, I wish I had a match. So you could see the little flame that might be in you. That was sitting there in the cold of your little flame. Mm -hmm. Running around in your cold, stiff neckness. Amen. Heart, heart against God. Yes, amen. While he controlling your life as a serpent on the inside. But Paul said, I cannot stand to live a cold life. Therefore, I, I got to do something myself to bring the fire up. Amen. It's not God's job to bring the fire up. Yeah. It's your job to light that baby up. Amen. Hallelujah. And you have to light it up with prayer. You have to light it up with dedication. You have to light it up with devotion. You have to light it up reading the word. You have to light it up obeying God. You got to light it up using your faith. You got to light it up giving to God. You got to light it up walking in the spirit and the fruits of the Holy Ghost. And so Paul began to light it up. He pulled some bundles of the Holy Spirit and throwed it in the fire. And all of a sudden this snake jumped out. They were mad at Paul because mm -hmm. he had to come out of his hiding place. Amen. And he did it. Mm -hmm. But Paul did one thing. He shook it off. Yes. Yes. I'm going to be preaching. I have a few more days. You got to shake yourself loose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you they say you gotta shake yourself loose. You gotta shake, shake yourself, yourself loose. loose. Amen. I call that self deliverance. Cause if, if this snake hang on me, he shook it off. And the Bible said the people looked at it, thought he won't die, but the boss stood up and kept on walking. And they tried to brand him as a special God. No, he was not a God, but he had the God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that gave him the victory in the midst of it. Can you give God a praise now? Amen. your life. Amen. Joshua had whooped everything. Then he came by and looked at his soldiers and his son was standing his head in that, in that 24th verse. And when they brought out, he had told them to bring out those kings. He said when they brought out those kings to Joshua, he called for all of Israel like. He called for everybody. Everybody pay attention. Call it for you. He called for Israelite and told the commanders of the men of war who went with him, Come, put your feet on the necks of these kings. Amen. He didn't say, Put your hand. He said, Put your feet 
on the neck of your enemy. Amen. Amen. Not your mouth. Amen. 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 Put your feet on the neck of these kings. And they came and put their what? Feet up on the necks of them. That means saints, amen, that was in the pew had power now. That means just beginning saints had power now. Amen. All saints that had not used power used the power. Come on. Amen. amen. Backslid saints used the power. Showing you how to defeat your enemy. Because anytime you put your foot on the neck, you choke in the air. Yes, sir. Amen. You shouldn't let the devil choke you no more. Amen. How do y'all quit let the devil choke you? Hallelujah. It's called a popcorn spirit. A popcorn spirit will whirl itself around your big body and choke you out. Amen. He can choke you out. Do you hear me? It's a poverty spirit. That's what that snake is. It's kin to poverty. And he comes to choke every Christian of out of life that Christ has given them. Amen. Come on. That is your time to choke him. Put your foot on his neck. Look in the spirit and see can you find your snake. And put your foot on his neck. And don't just land on top of his neck. Scared you're going to kill him. That's the whole plan about the whole thing. That now you can kill what's been killing you. You can kill that's been killing you. Put your foot on the neck of your enemy. Hallelujah. Baba Lobo Shabbat. 
got another scripture, but I got to stop tonight. Read. And the God of peace shall bruise saints under your feet. Short. Under whose feet, not under his. My feet. My feet. Under whose feet? My feet. Where you going to put him at? Under my feet. Who going to put him up under there? Say, God going to use my feet. God going to use my feet. That's gonna, see, that's what's going to be cut off. All that other stuff that you've been walking toward that been defeating you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. God's no longer going to let Satan have that control of your feet no more. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He's been bruising some of your heel. That's why you're walking like this. Crippled. Because he's bruising your heel. It ain't nothing painful like a having a bruised heel. Amen. Amen. It cripples the body off broke toe. Amen. Do you hear me? Off swollen ankle. Amen. It cripples the whole body from getting to where it needs to go. And that Satan been crippling your life. Amen. Not letting you walk. But God says, since you can't do this no more, all I need to recognize you, make you recognize what I'm going to use. Amen. I need you to know I'm going to use your feet. Hallelujah. And she said, can I borrow you? Because you ain't using them. <laughs> 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 Can I borrow your feet because you're not using it? <laughs> Amen. Because God going to use your feet from yeah. here on out to put the devil where he's supposed to be. Up under your feet. Can you say amen? amen. amen. Last scripture, go to John chapter 5. I got to go. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Brother, I'm going to need some Holy Ghost good time or whatever you put in that's good time. So just be some music, Coach Pastor, because I need me something good. Are you there? Let's look at the first, uh, second, uh, third, uh, second verse. It said, Now there in Jerusalem, a pool near the sheep gate. This pool in the Hebrew is called Bethesda, having five porches, a clovers, amen, and colonnades, and doorways. In these lay a great mother to a great number of sick folk. How many, what kind of folk? Sick. Some blind and some crippled and some paralyzed and some swivel up, waiting for the bubbling. Amplified say the bubbling, your Bible said troubling. Do your Bible say troubling? I say moving. For the moving what? For the what? Amen. For and what? And an angel went down. And an angel of the Lord went down at a point of season into the pool and moved and stirred up the water. And whoever then first, after the stirring up of the water, stepped in, was cured of whatever disease with which he was afflicted. Amen. Oh, y'all don't hurt me off here. So tonight, thank you, Lord. Okay. amen, thank you, and I'm not going to read about the other guy, but I just want you to know tonight, there's healing in the water. Amen. There's blessing in the water. There's deliverance in the water. Oh, come on. There's joy in the water. In the water. Come on, somebody up here. Does anybody know what I'm saying? Yeah. There is total deliverance power in this water tonight. I wish somebody get happy and think it's not magic. I believe that God, listen, and when you read the rest of this, the Bible said there was a certain man there that was paralyzed 38 years. Amen. That tried to get in the water that couldn't get in the water. Amen. Because somebody else always stepping in front of him. Uh -huh. But Jesus was there that day. And the Bible said Jesus saw him yeah. and told him, said, do you want to be made whole? Uh -huh. When Jesus said it to him, he still let the water be trouble where yeah. everybody else was. Uh -huh. He did not stop the healing that was going on in the water. Because there's an angel in this house tonight. God told me I'm going to send an angel in the house tonight that now talk of water and the people of God will get healed, be delivered and set free. I wish somebody would get happy like you were used to be more. And you got to know one thing about being the one the Bible said the first one. <laughs> Do you hear me? And the first one didn't mean just one. It means those people that made up in their mind to do it. With the expectation of something happening. You don't know, heard it. There were some people that had a little slow moment in their life. They think they were going to work. But there were some that were standing in first. That might have been about 15, 20. That might have been 30. That might have been 40. But they were standing first. Because they had expectation that God was going to do something in this season that nobody else ain't never See, I come to tell you, you're in the right season tonight. I say, God, do something powerful in your life. Oh, Jesus, help me right now. Help me right now, Lord. Thank you. 
brother. You ain't on me to tell you. I need you to get on your feet. It's about to go down. Come on, get on your feet.
Y'all, we're 